Okay, so uh, I'm going to be introducing you guys to bearings, the very basics of it. You might remember a lot of this from before, but um, I'm just going to go from the start and see if we can refresh some of the some of the ideas. So bearings are a form of measurement um, that can give you a distance and a direction that you need to go in. They're often used by pilots and shipping companies to kind of tell the plane or the boat how far to go and in what direction. A bearing is always measured from the north, so we've got to remember that we have our little coordinate um, axis here. North is always, you can always, if you want, assume that it's up the page if you've not been told that. And remember, you guys have the saying, never eat soggy wheat bix. So it's north, east, south, and then west. And you'll have to have that, you have to know that information. Now before we move on, there's a couple of key things to point out here. What is the angle between north and east? Looks like a right angle, and it is. So it's 90 degrees between north and east. So I could have a bearing between north and east, that's 90 degrees. And between north and south, that's turning around 180 degrees. North to west would be 270 degrees. And going from pointing north, turning all the way around back north would be 360 degrees. So remember, between all of these, there's a 90 degree angle. And we always measure our bearings clockwise, like I was showing, always from north and then around clockwise. And the other thing that we need to keep in mind is that they're always written in three digits, i.e. 321 degrees, or they could be something as small as 5 degrees, but we still say it 005 degrees or 005 degrees. So, if we look at a few examples here, keeping that in mind, um, the first one here is asking us to find the bearing from O to B. So what that means is it kind of helps to imagine being that person. Stand at O, because that's where we're starting from. So that's where you want to stand, and point yourself north. And imagine that you're a little robot that can only turn clockwise and only pivot. So you're standing north, you're on O, and you can only turn clockwise. So how far you have to turn until you're pointing at B is 30 degrees. But remember, bearings have to be written as three-digit numbers, so we put the zero in front of the 30. So with bearing problems, sometimes the, the tricky part is trying to figure out where to actually start from. And <clears throat> that's usually just looking at the word problem carefully and looking at um, where they say you're standing from. So in this case, from Y, so I find where Y is and I'm going to stand there, point yourself north, and then I need to go around to Z. So always from north, around clockwise. So the bearing from Y, so from standing on Y, pointing north, how far would I have to pivot as a little robot so that I could walk in the direction of Z? And I can only pivot clockwise would be that far. And it hasn't told me directly what that measurement is, but, you know, this line between X and W is a straight line. And you guys know how many degrees on a straight line. We have 180 degrees on a straight line, so my bearing is going to be 180 minus 50, which is equal to 130 degrees. That would be my bearing from Y to Z. So again, standing on Y and turning around to look at Z. Looking at another problem here, we've got two parts to it. So let's go for the first one here. Find the bearing of X from O. So I'm going to stand on O because it's telling me I'm coming from O. I'm going to point myself in the north direction. And then I have to find out how far do I have to turn until I'm pointing at X. But remember, you're a little robot and you can only turn clockwise. So standing at O, pointing north, you have to walk around clockwise, pivoting around in a little circle until you're pointing at X. So if you're standing at O looking at Z to the north, you literally have to turn all that big way around before you can head towards X. So that's the bearing measurement there. And you guys might remember one of our other geometry rules. You have to pull all this stuff together, like the angles on a straight line, but this one here is which one? That one's angles at point equal 360 degrees. <coughs> So, if I've got 360 degrees at a point, and I'm showing 60 degrees between X and Z, 
what's left over there. 360 minus 60 equals 300. So my bearing between O and, sorry, yeah, between O and X is 300 degrees. So from O to X is 300 degrees. Now if we look at it from a different point of view or a different language here, find bearing from X. So this time I want to go from X to O. So now I need to think about where I'm going to start. And I look at the problem carefully and it says from X. So I really want to go to X and stand on it. Point myself north. Well, there's no north line drawn in there, but that's okay. You can draw on your own. So I'm on top of X. I'm pointing north. And I need to figure out how far clockwise do I turn doot, 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 until I'm pointing at O. So that's what I'm looking for there. So one thing to keep in mind, a little trick for you guys, is that all north lines are parallel. So we have all our angle geometry rules, like alternate angles, co-interior angles, and corresponding angles. So we need to look for our Z angle, or a U angle, or an F angle here. Sometimes for me it's helpful to highlight the parallel lines. So north lines are parallel. And if I put in this shape here, I've got myself a, <coughs> a U angle for these two angles down here. So that's going to be a co-interior. So I could say co-int <coughs> co angles equal 180 on parallel lines. So if I have 60 there, I'm going to go 180 minus 60 equals 120. So my bearing from X to O is 120 degrees. So again, in this case, I actually had to draw on my own north line because it wasn't given to me, and then measure around until I'm pointing, you're turning clockwise only until I'm pointing at O. And I notice there that the north lines are parallel lines, so I can use the co-interior rule that 60 and 120 will add up to 180 inside of that U shape. So one thing to notice on this problem is that I'm actually going back and forth between the same two points, O and X, and then X to O, but the order does matter here. If I start at O, I have to turn really far around clockwise until I'm pointing at X. I have to turn a total of 300 degrees on a bearing. But if I'm at X and I'm trying to turn to O, turning clockwise, I don't have to turn as far and it's actually a different bearing of 120. So order matters. It depends on where you're starting. It's not going to be the same between two points. It depends on which one you're starting at. You'll have a different bearing. So keep that in mind. And don't be afraid to draw on your own north lines, and remember that they're all going to be parallel, so you'll have your alternate, co-interior, and corresponding angles to use, in addition to angles on a straight line and angles at a point.